All right, in the next exercise, I um, wanted to introduce some surface modulation tools. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're, we're aiming to create a hipped roof. And if we look at the reference model here, a hipped roof is basically a um, set of four surfaces that meet in the middle and angle down at the front and back. So uh, how could we do this? There's a couple different methods that I could think about. It says um, use two surface creation methods. So I'm going to um, use a, one method for this creation of the roof and one method for this one. In this one, I'm going to just use the surface from three or four corner points. And I'm just going to match them up with the endpoints and the high points that you see on the verticals there. And I'm going to create the surfaces that way. So if you were creating this roof from scratch, what you would need to do is first draw in these vertical lines indicating how high you want these points to be. Um, but that's pretty easy. So this is why I always say you start with line work. You never just start by modeling blindly. We always have a reference and idea about both the plan and the height of something that uh, we're trying to model. So I'm gonna keep using the surface from three or four points and I'm going to create this side of the roof and I can close it off using the same technique on this side. And now if I wanted to, I could um, select all of these surfaces and use J to join them all together into one poly surface. There's another way that we can manipulate this and move it around. So I'm going to show you um, actually two variations. The first variation is like, what if we just created a surface from this input like that, and then we split that with these lines here. And press enter. And then let's uh, move everything up to the top so that the ridge is matched up with the top where it should be. I'm gonna use M and vertical to move this up to the top. There's a surface manipulation tool that we can use called Move Edge. So I'm gonna type in Move and then E for Edge and it automatically brings up Move Edge. So I'll hit Enter to select that. It says Select Edges. I'm gonna select that one, that one, that one, and that one. I'm not hitting Shift, it just automatically adds the selection as I go around. Once I'm done, I press Enter. And now it says Point to Move From. and Make note of this, you want the direction constraint to be vertical. So if yours isn't on vertical, if you have all these other options, make sure you hit vertical because what we wanna do is move these faces down to the point directly below them. So point to move from would be this point. Point to move to is this point. That worked really well on three of the four sides, but this one is very messed up. We have no idea why Rhino sometimes decides that um, lines are not appropriate or edges don't work. But I would recommend if you ever run into these types of issues that you just uh, delete them and see what you can do to mitigate that. So you could use the surface from three or four points to um, close that off, just like we did with the other one, like that. Or you could, uh, you could mirror this off to the other side. So we go down into our top view and use the MI command for mirror. Start of mirror plane here and is here. We uh, have a copy made um, that is in the correct location. I wanted to see though if we could actually create this from a, a solid surface. So I'm going to just delete all of those. And what I'm gonna do is use this box command to create um, a box because maybe I want to create this entire solid shape with the walls and the roof all at the same time. So I'm going to make a box and dropping down this cascading menu, I'm gonna do it from three points. So I'm gonna start uh, here, make my second point this, and I'm gonna um, make the width of the box to the roof. And now I'm gonna extrude the box down and I'm just gonna use this reference model as my, um, my base. So I'll set it like that. Now we have a box uh, for the base of the building. You can uh, manipulate these poly surfaces just like surfaces. So um, if I want to split this with these um, poly surfaces or poly lines up here, I can very easily do that. So I just select this and use SP for split and select the input curves like that. 
Well, that didn't work. That's because the poly surface is all of the joined surfaces. So I would need to explode it first. So I'm gonna hit X for explode. Now it says uh, it's creating meshes. So we have individual surfaces now that we can work with in this poly surface. Now I'm going to split this again using these um, and we have our roof surface split. So before we used move edge to lift up the surface and move the exterior edges down, in this I'm going to try to move this edge up. So I'm gonna use move edge, select this central edge, and you'll see it gives you these little arrows that tell you which um, edge of which poly surface you're moving. So I'm gonna, doesn't really matter, I'm gonna select this one first, press enter, and then making sure your direction constraint is still vertical, you're going to select the base point and the target point, and that lifts up that edge. We can duplicate that on this side, just like that. But what about these um, pieces here? What could we do with these? Uh, your first instinct might be to rotate it along this axis and see if you can match it up here. But that's not actually gonna work. If we use the rotate 3D command, and we use this um, rotation axis here, you can see that it just falls short of where it needs to be. So let's see if there's any other tools that can help us. Maybe try uh, showing the object control points. Sometimes when we have the control points of an object, we can use those and move those around. So if we had a control point up here, we should be able to move this point up into place, but we're not seeing that. So it's the reason that I've shown you so many different ways to create uh, surfaces is because not everything is gonna work um, perfectly every time you try it. And so you're gonna need a reservoir of different tools and techniques to be able to handle situations when you don't know um, why something isn't working. So if we don't have uh, control points that we can move on this surface, then I'm just going to um, right click to take my points off and um, I'm going to uh, take both of these and move them vertically. So I'm gonna go M, V, bring them up to this point. And now I'm gonna use move edge to select those edges, press enter, make sure my constraint is vertical and bring them down to their uh, point here. So now we've done it in two different ways. One was just creating it by using um, three or four corner points, which was basically very, very easy. And the other was by moving the edges on the surface, either up or down. So there's always more than one way to do something. Um, and I just wanted to use this as a little example of why that is.